بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل سنة وحضراتكم طيبين وأنا الحقيقة سعيد أن أنا بكون معكم إن شاء الله تكون مجموعة طيبة من المحاضرات ونستفيد سوا من المناقشة مع بعضنا بإذن الله الحقيقة المحاضرات دي هنتكلم فيها في الأول النهاردة على الأناتومي السونوغرافيك أناتومي ولما نتكلم على الأناتوميكال فايننجز اللي احنا بنشوفها بالألترا ساوند ويشوف Start with the start. الترمز اللي احنا هنستخدمها لازم نكون واخدين بالنا منها كويس وبنستخدمها الاستخدام السليم. The term embryo and fetus and how to use proper language. Actually, embryologists apply the word embryo for the period starting from the fertilization day, day that's about day 14, 15 or 16, and for eight weeks. So the period of embryogenesis or organogenesis is a period that starts from the uh, day of fertilization and lasts for eight. Yes. However, in uh, clinical practice, the obstetricians and uh, sonographers uh, use some difficulty, uh, find some difficulty in using this uh, term. They usually uh, like to, according to their uh, charts and their uh, tables of growth, use the first day of last menstrual period as reference point. So the embryo uh, is considered as uh, uh, the human being from the first day of last menstrual period until it completed 10 gestational weeks. And after completing 10 weeks from the onset of week 11, it is called fetus until term. So the term early pregnancy is used frequently in many uh, uh, books and textbooks and in many references uh, to describe the uh, uh, this period uh, from the first day of last menstrual period to for 10 weeks and uh, use the word embryogenesis for this phase. Uh, the next point the, uh, is the menstrual dates. When we say, for example, we are in week 24, we mean by it we have completed 23 weeks as calculated from the first day of last menstrual period and we are now within the period from 23 weeks plus one day two days three days or six days till 23 weeks and seven days after this we have completed 24 weeks and we shall go into the week 20 uh, 24 25 now we start with the uh, uh, anatomical features in early pregnancy uh, by week. Uh, the first uh, uh, finding uh, during the week uh, uh, number four. Week number four means from day 20, after day 21 to day 28, uh, before the first missed period, when the beta HCG, when the pregnancy test may be positive, but beta HCG value is less than 1,000, you will find non-specific findings, and you should avoid confusion. You will, what you will find is just a thick endometrium, which is the decidua, and you may find in the ovary corpus luteum uh, some free fluid. And if you use the color doubler, you will find the active vascularity. These findings are very non-specific and do, do not signify the presence of pregnancy. Uh, do not exclude it. The, they do not exclude ectopic pregnancy. So uh, you should be very careful when uh, on reporting a case before the first missed period and before beta H D thousand. After completing four weeks and exactly at day thirty one, when beta H C G level reaches 1000 this is the discriminatory zone i suggest we better should term it the first discriminatory zone because there are other discriminatory zones that we should put in our minds uh, at this point of pregnancy at day 31 and during the fifth week we will find a tiny gestational ring that is two or three millimeters within the decidua the decidual thickness in normal should be at least two millimeters. The gestational ring should be circular, regular, high in uterine cavity, and you may find a double decidual appearance outside this decidua, uh, which is the space between decidua capsularis and parietalis. This is of little clinical. Uh, 
uh, at the sex week after completing five weeks and exactly when beta subunit reaches about 7,000 you will see uh, we will detect a gestational sac of size 8 to 10 millimeters and maybe more when the sac size is 8 meter or exactly or 10 millimeters you should detect a yolk sac inside it this yolk sac should measure 3 to 6 millimeters occasionally you may find embryonic ball if few days are left or if uh, uh, ovulation has occurred somewhat earlier uh, you will find uh, uh, embryonic pole. If you could detect embryonic pulsations, the embryonic pulsations will be somewhat slow with heart rates 80 to 100. That should be put in mind in early in this very early phase of embryonic. After six weeks, during the seventh week, you should look at this diagram and you should put it in your mind clearly. You will see in the center of the diagram the embryo. As you see, surrounded by fluid. This fluid is the fluid of the amniotic cavity, is the most central one. And outside it, there is a membrane which is the amnion. This amnion is surrounded outside by the second fluid cavity, which is the chorionic cavity. And from the ventral aspect of the embryo, protrudes the yolk sac into the chorionic cavity. A third space that may be seen in is the uterine cavity. This uterine cavity is actually the area between decidua parietalis and decidua capsularis. Uh, this may be seen in the forms by ultrasound, like that in the, uh, 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 it may resemble the gestational sac, it may look as a slit like, like uh, in the right picture with clear fluid, it may be uh, seen uh, as with the uh, uh, turbid fluid. However, all these forms are of little clinical. At the seven weeks, when we complete six weeks and when beta HCG reaches 10,000, this is the, uh, uh, in my opinion, should be considered the second discriminatory zone. You should keep in mind, this is the period exactly 15 days after first detection of the uh, 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 first gestational ring when you see gestational ring at day 20 at day 31 15 days more you will reach the seventh week you will reach a beta subunit 10,000 because at this value a lot of findings should be detected an embryo of four uh, millimeters at least and definite heart rates should be seen with at least 110 the amnion and the chorionic spaces are clear in this area, the sac size should be at least 18 millimeters and sometimes. So, by completing seven weeks of pregnancy, <clears throat> you should keep in mind the following findings. Beta HCG 10,000, sac 20 millimeters, embryo 4 millimeters, embryonic heart rate 110, yolk sac 36, amnion and chorionic spaces and maybe decidual space. After completing seven weeks, and when we are at the eighth week of pregnancy, the crown rumblings is nine millimeters or more. Ha here in this point, we can uh, identify the body, which is slender from the head of the embryo, and even that's which can be seen by 2D or even by 3D if we apply it. Inside the fetal, inside the embryonic head, you can detect a hypoechogenic area or an eco-free area circular inside. This is the rhombenkephalon or the posterior fossa or actually this is the future of the cerebellum. This appears as cystic and you should not confuse it. This is a normal finding which should not be con confused with posterior fossa cyst. If you see it, especially if you use transvaginal sonography in a high resolution system. When we complete eight weeks and when we go into the ninth week, uh, further two findings will be added in this week. The spine can be seen. This is actually the first uh, seen uh, part of the neural tube. 
It's not ossified, actually. It's somewhat uh, fleshy or cartilaginous. But, however, it will be ossified later on after two further weeks. And the second finding that you may find is the physiologic umbilical hernia. The physiologic umbilical hernia appears during the ninth week and may last for a few days and even some week or more. And this appears spontaneously. It's not a pathologic, but it, it is a, a At physiological weeks five. of pregnancy. You can see, in addition, the cerebral ventricles inside the brain and the fetal heart rate reaches up to 175. At 11 weeks, here is the next, uh, what I call myself a third discriminatory zone. That's a very important point. I remind you, we have now completed 10 weeks. We are have completed the embryonic period. We are now dealing with a fetus because we are now in the 11th week. By this period, you will find some ossification of the base of the skull, the first ossification. And by this time, the onset of 11th week, we are going to start our recommended scanning time as recommended by the ICU for the first trimester standard scan. The characteristic here is that the crown rhomb lens is 42 millimeters. This is the size on which we can apply our first trimester scan. After completing 11 weeks and when we are in the uh, uh, 12th week, the crown rhomb lens further increases up to more than 56 millimeters. The whole skull is ossified now. More intracranial anatomy can be seen. The, inside the uh, lateral ventricles, you can see clearly the complexes. Fetal limbs are clear, the tail and of the skull can, can be, be identified very clearly. You can examine the skull and you can see the nasal bone, you can see the maxilla, and posteriorly you can measure the nuchal translucency as in the standard aneuploid scan. Now, thank you very much and hope to see you in the discussion and in next week's uh, uh, lecture. Thank you, bye-bye.